Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Shreds Takes. I'm your host, Mike Shredder. I'm joined by Clemson student athlete and founder of Array Athletic, Alex Tufol. Alex, thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Really appreciate it. Mike, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So where I want to get started with this, obviously, I want to talk a lot about Array Athletic because that's definitely the big highlight, I would say, that you've been doing the last you know, you know know year or so. Um, just can you talk to a little bit about why um, you decided to uh, invest in track and why Clemson was the good option for you when you were kind of going through the athletic process? Absolutely. Yeah. So I started out uh, when I was younger, I did a bunch, bunch of different sports, um, you know, soccer, baseball, football, whatever. Uh, found track in, in middle school, had the best coach ever. Uh, he's the one that had me stick with it. I was awful. Uh, but in uh, my freshman year, I found the pole vault, did that just like two weeks, came back my sophomore year and I was like, all right, now I'm going to really do this. Uh, and I was kind of mid, like I was, I was an okay high schooler. Um, but my team had really like a very poor depth on my team. Um, so I ended up needing to just go do random events. So I was a pole vaulter, but I would go shot put, I would do discus, I would do javelin, whatever. Uh, and then what would happen from there is, I ended up getting recruited to be a decathlete uh, at a few power five universities, which was super exciting at the, the time I was expecting to go um, somewhere uh, either a mid-major uh, or a division three school uh, in my home state of Pen Pennsylvania. But then uh, doors opened up and, and I'm just thankful that I was able to, to kind of head through them and follow them. And uh, I will say this, like, I love Clemson. I can't imagine going any anywhere else. There's nowhere I'd rather graduate than, than Clemson. Um, but when I first went there, I was like, it's just, I mean, all the other schools I visited, there was something I didn't like about them or something wrong. Clemson was just the least bad. So I went to Clemson thinking, oh, you know, it'll it'll be all right. Uh, but then I realized this is this is the place I really do call home. And there's a there's a saying at Clemson called the, the Clemson family. And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. College, every college has their thing. Uh, and it really does feel like a family. Uh, if you need to connect with with anyone, they're happy to help you and connect with you. And um, it's just always somewhere that I'm thrilled to call home. So from there, right, obviously, you know, NIL legislation passed in 2021. And, you know, for you, obviously, you've tried to take full advantage of that through Array Athletic. And, yeah, obviously, you know, I've kind of been following a little on LinkedIn what you've been doing. And, you know, you guys are obviously looking to hire now and stuff like that. So you built your your brand enough where you can try and get some people to to be involved with it as, as well. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, just why that started for you? And, you know, obviously why you decided to, you know, found your own NIL firm in a pretty competitive landscape with all the collectives and agencies that are trying to get involved in this space? Absolutely. So it started with a, a pitch competition. I did a business pitch competition that uh, was about, you know, hey, go, go, go pitch. And I thought, what great pro professional experience that would be. Uh, so I made up a company and it was awful. It was kind of NIL adjacent. It was terrible. From there, uh, a another Clemson dropout who's a, a uh, owns a few startups and very successful in the the West Coast out in the Bay Area reached out. He said, "Hey, this is what you should make this business. This is how we can get there. These are some people you should you should talk to about this." So from there, we we decided to create this thing because I realized that all the platforms that I was using did not fulfill my needs, right? There's a lot of uh, NIL opportunities for individuals um, that are quarterbacks of Power 5 universities uh, or who have 100,000 followers um, or an OnlyFans account. I have none of those things. I'm not a quarterback. I don't have an OnlyFans. So I needed to, uh, you know, say, like, I, I have this value as a student athlete. I have five times the engagement rate of a normal student's profile, so there, there's a value here that that there's a company that wants to reach. So while Coca-Cola or NBC may may not be interested in doing a deal with with me, Clemson Pizzeria is a company that would love to give me a hundred bucks to do a post, right? So we're we're starting to bridge the gap between big businesses, big athletes, and small businesses and smaller athletes. Connect them to create equity uh, and and just open up and bridge that gap, right? And then we also have a have a way that we can maximize ROI for businesses by predicting to 90% accuracy the uh, engagement rate 
uh, the impressions, the followers, the posts of someone's profile 30 days after they posted it to actually then put a value on whether they're trying to get impressions or they're trying to get click through. We can look at that and say, hey, if your goal is impressions and this is your cost per impression, then this athlete costs you this much money. So you can search athletes by the price per post. Super, super, super cool stuff. For you then, you know, what's been the the challenge of trying to get this to be super relevant for athletes, not just at Clemson? Because I know you've, you've got a lot of people from Clemson to obviously be involved in this, but right. you, you're thinking about like other companies that, you know, obviously out to win sports, um, you know, what those guys have done from Syracuse or Slice Sports Management, or even just the other ones, like you just think of like the natural sports agencies that are getting involved in the NIL, right? Like, you know, obviously what you're doing is, you know, really good in terms of trying to like to bridge the divide between big athletes, small athletes, big businesses, small businesses. But from your standpoint, as a leader of the company, what are you trying to do to differentiate yourselves from those other ones who go in and say, okay, yeah, we can get all these social media postings from all these athletes and we can get them involved. How are you trying to differentiate that? And what's the challenge with trying to differentiate yourself in that huge, this huge landscape that we're experiencing with NIL? That's a great question. You, you mentioned out to win sports. A good friend of mine, Jack Adler, uh, he's he's someone who, if you haven't spoken to yet, would be a great person to pick his brain. I'm not sure if you have, but he's he's an awesome dude. Uh, so yeah, a, a lot of a lot of the environment has a lot of really valuable orgs, a lot of different valuable pieces. What what we're trying to do is make that a, make that available in an all in one place. The other thing that really does make us unique, we have a lot of aspects of companies such as Mogul, Open Doors, Out to Win. But the thing that is the biggest part of our business is the fact that we reach out individually, we have campus reps, and we get small, localized, hyper-local businesses on board to do deals with small athletes, right? So we have this large search criteria. Uh, and so you, you can search for, I want a sophomore female athlete who does track from Arizona, originally who goes to University of Michigan, right? You can, you can literally search... Uh, in, in, in such a, a narrow scope. And then what that does is it opens up to say, hey, you know, this is the value we're bringing businesses. But I think what's really unique about Array is that we're inviting small small businesses on. And so we're like inviting them into this, into this marketplace more as like, so we're doing that on top of pro providing the resources from, from other companies. So we have partnerships with some of the other um, NIL companies to, to kind of help streamline our process, send, send leads their way and such. But the biggest thing for us is we want to be an all-in-one platform, not just for athletes, but for athletic departments. So we want to be able to pr provide this from, from everything from compliance to actual signing to filing taxes to education on how to use that money, right? So investing in cryptocurrency, those are all partnerships that we have. So when we, when we can go to an athletic department without a student athletic, uh, student athlete development program, uh, we can go to them and say, listen, these are the resources we're going to provide. We're going to make sure all your content is um, compliant and then we're going to help help your athletes maximize their success beyond the locker room. So with that, right, you know, you kind of hinted at it, which is obviously the financial education of this, which is something that right. I haven't heard a whole lot of. Um, and maybe I'm, that's just because maybe I'm, I'm removed from college a couple of years. So maybe that's, that's partially why, but I think that's a huge piece, which you just mentioned, because obviously if people are getting deals, and they don't know how to manage the money they're getting, right. that, could be, that could be a you know potential big problem for a lot of these young athletes. Can you talk from your standpoint, you know, what you've tried to do? So when you go pitch to you know administration at Clemson or other schools and say, hey, you know, we we know that these deals are gonna be coming in and we think it's really vital to have financial education as a forefront of it. What have you tried to do and what have you learned to be able to? have an understanding of it so that you can go and speak to these, you know, higher upset college universities and be like, Hey, look, I have an understanding of what the, how this works. And here's how we can make sure that this gets done. If we partner with you guys or work with you guys. Yeah. So all that financial education stuff is, it is great. I work with a friend of mine, Ryan Shatter. He runs a company called success beyond game day. They provide this for NBA teams, NFL teams, MLB teams, over 100 athletic departments in the NCAA in hundreds of high schools in, in the US. So this is something that we've able, we, we were able to package onto Array Athletic that we plan to sell uh, 
to continue to sell to uh, athletic departments at a subscription basis. The coolest thing about this is when you look at the start of NIL, when you look at what set the domino effect off for the start of NIL, you see Johnny Football, right? When 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 you watch the Johnny Manziel documentary, when when you read about him, when you just reminisce on the, on those Johnny Football times, and you're watching college football, and then you realize he was making all this money, didn't know how to spend it, and ruined his career, right? And he not just spent his money. I mean, drug addict lost his NFL contract, lost his draft stock, and so that that is to me the biggest selling point. It's like, look, here's an athlete who got all the, this money. The reason why. NIL exists today. And the, the, the reason why the NCAA that 117 years ago, Theodore Roosevelt wrote into existence hasn't had this until this point. Let's prove that we should have it, right? And so by pro providing athletes these different resources, it's great. We also have testimonials from, from athletes at various different schools that have said, hey, listen, you know, this has been so crucial for me. And I, I finally learned how to invest. I've never known how to invest, right? I didn't know what a broad market mutual fund was. So also, I think bringing these te testimonials is a big part in, in kind of that selling piece. But also, it's just affordable, which, which I think is the, the best part. So what at Clemson has helped you from an education standpoint? Or like, how did you get the education about NIL yourself? Was that just like from, you know, reading the legislation that they that they put out? Is that from... You know, the being an athlete yourself, where you're getting informed by this, obviously from the maybe the beginning of the year calls about it when it gets introduced, because you seem to have a, a good understanding of it. Obviously, you wouldn't be running your own company if you didn't. But can you talk a little bit about like where your education for NIL came from, and like how you keep yourself informed so that you stay ahead of the game from these other companies that are trying to to win the likes of other athletes and you know get NIL deals from as well? Yeah. There's, there's three big things. The first is that Clemson's ath athletic department is incredibly good at communicating to us uh, the ins and outs of South Carolina laws on, on NIL, as well as the university specific policies. These are things that are constantly communicated. And if I have any questions, I can always come, come and ask them. The second thing is that my extensive network is something that I'm very thankful for. I'm thankful for the fact that I have so many adults in my network, people who've been in the industry of creator economy and such, that I can text and say, hey, can we can we go on a call th th this evening? I just have a question about this. And they're willing to, to drop everything, hop on a 20-minute call and answer some of my questions. I have a guy out in DC who works in, in NIL who goes to these hearings. He goes to the he, he, he goes to the, the, the lawmakers and he keeps me updated on legislation in the NIL world. The third thing is that the biggest difference between what Array Athletic is and what the other firms are is student athlete run. We have student athlete advisory board and a student athlete founder that have been able to shape what this has become. Because while a lot of other companies that want to capitalize on, on NIL are doing this from, from, from the stance of, don't get me wrong, this is, there's nothing wrong with this. I am a product of capitalism, but this capitalist approach is let's make, make money. I want to help the athlete. And so there's, there, there's this illusion of athlete first in almost every other NIL firm and every other NIL marketplace. Though it costs a monthly subscription, it's 20% revenue share, right? They don't actually pr provide resources. They give me free liquid IV, which I mean, I get, I can go and get a billion packs of Gatorade for free any day. Like I, I don't want these things, right? So they either lack the understanding of what an athlete actually needs or they don't care. And so that's what we've wanted to do. So. Again, big shout out to my network, the Clemson a a Athletic Department. But I think by having student athletes surrounded uh, in, in in what Array is, is really helping it to be something that other athletes want to jump on. What are you trying to use to help build it, you know, bigger? Is it like, like what are you doing from a social media standpoint? What are you doing from, you know, overall marketing outreach to be able to, you know, expand it to becoming obviously bigger than it is now and something that you can build to be the future of this space. What are you trying to do made from a digital landscape, a business landscape? Um, you know, what are you trying to do from that, from that retrospect to be able to make this something that can really dominate the, the space of NIL? 
Yeah. So the the first thing, like you mentioned earlier, uh, growth is great. So we're hiring a, about eight different positions uh, in about a week and a half. We're gonna we're gonna start sifting through those a- applications, start some in- interview processes. Uh, so that's super exciting. The other side of things is that we're in a growth stage. So we have uh, some investors. We're looking to to kind of grow that network more. So as we continue to to push on and and move closer. We need to make sure that we have a platform built before we get even more athletes. We have over 500 athletes on our wait list right, right now, which is amazing. Um, but I want to make sure that we have um, a platform in order to support the, those athletes. So we are hiring a, a excuse me, uh, we're hiring a social media um, coordinator and we're also hiring a graphic designer, which is going to be great. But we also are, are starting to build our platform. So we're in phase one of development for that platform. So that when that's up, we can in, in, import all our athletes, all our companies, uh, be able to have login pages for each of them um, so that we can actually support them. So obviously growth is important. Uh, and, and so we we plan on growing. That's how businesses work. But right now we're, we want to make sure that we have the infrastructure to support those athletes that we grow too. So really, really exciting stuff. So lastly, for you, what do you see the future of? Because NIL right now is, is a bit of that the people describe it as the Wild West in a sense. Um, you know, how do you, what, what do you see the future of it is, you know, being? And, you know, how do you keep yourself prepared? Which you kind of talked about a little bit earlier, but like, can you talk about just with obviously growing and changing and new things being implemented? How can, you know, what do you see it being in, you know, a, you know, a year from now, five years from now? And, you know, how do you keep yourself on top of this stuff as you, you know, continue to build a ray to, you know, being the company you want it to be? Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think being ready to, t- to change and open to change is very important. Instagram was a bourbon app, right? Netflix was a DVD rental service. And so it's it's important that as things come up, as things change, to be on top of it. Right. So I think being open and flexible to change is going to be a a big advantage for any startup. And the other thing is being being learned on on what's going on in D.C. Right. So every time a new law comes out, just being being in in the know is going to be great. Where I see, you know, high level where I see NIL going to answer that question for you. I think we will see the destruction of the mid-major. We're going to see a super conference of about two, two dozen to 30 teams. Uh, we're we're going to see them maybe maybe dissolve from the NCAA. This is complete speculation. This is this is my what well, I think is going to happen. Just just disclaimer. I think we're going to see d- dissolve of the current Power Four to a super conference. It's going to be the best of the best professional sports, but in college. And then we're going to see the mid major is going to be d- destroyed. So there's no more, you know. Oh, I was I was a good high school football player. I got a full ride to. You know, James Madison, I played there, I transferred, I got, I don't, we're not going to see any more of that. We're going to see, I was the best football player in Texas. I got to go to play at the, the Super Conference. Or we're, we're going to say, hey, I was really good and I got to go get a great education and nothing else came of it. And so I think, uh, I think we're also going to see the end of a lot of Olympic sports that are non revenue generating such as men's track. So we're going to see men's track um, still exist, but again, probably only at that really high level, that super conference, something like a Clemson, Alabama, Arkansas, right? But we're not going to see that. Uh, I don't think exist for, for the most part at a lot of those other schools. We're already seeing right now the degradation of the integrity of, of Title IX uh, with, with newer laws coming out. So I'm not really sure. I think there's a lot of changes to come in the next decade. I'm pushing for the fact that I want athletes to have a chance to get an education uh, that they would not other otherwise be able to afford at, at every level. Uh, but of course, just fair play. Uh, I want to be able to see fair play at all levels and something that the NCAA really has never had um, in terms of like, I mean, I don't know, Clemson versus UConn fo- football game. That's not fair. Like, I don't know. Like I, that's why I'm a big NFL fan. I, I love Clemson football. I love college football, but it's not like fair. It's not like here's these good teams and whatever. And there's these, you know, five old guys that, uh, you know, hate the big 10 that sit in this room and say, Oh, four teams that are undefeated. No, no, no. Let's all right. 
Ohio State's in, everyone else is out. Let's let Alabama in with four losses, the whole thing. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think that there's a lot of changes that are going to come, a lot of changes that need to come. Don't know what it's going to look like. Those are just my two two cents. A little word vomit for you guys. No, no problem at all. And obviously, uh, you know, what you're doing at Array is 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 impressive stuff. So obviously, really appreciate you coming on to the pod. Like, it's, it, it's, it was good to chat with you and kind of hear this, like, again, as a, as a guy who's a student athlete who graduated in 23, the nature of NIL now is very different than it was even when I started, uh, you know, graduating college. So, Alex, I really appreciate you coming on to the pod. Obviously, best of luck with everything you're doing going forward with Array and obviously with T-Day Sports as well. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, you know, really appreciate you sharing your thoughts on this. And, um, you know, you're welcome back on anytime. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely. For everyone listening, Mike Shredder here with Alex Tufol from Clemson University, CEO of Array Athletic. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.